Hello, welcome to Sticks and Stones. I'm Peter. And I'm Brian O'Connor. We're your host here to share different stories and experiences about being gay. And on the show today, we're going to hear from the, what it was like to be outed in high school in the 1970s. We'll also talk to Sarah Holmes, who's the coordinator for USM's Center for Sexuality and Gender Diversity. But first, let me introduce to you Matt Robity. Hi, guys. Matt is the health specialist at the Franny Peabody Center here in Portland, and he's here to talk about their services. Matt, thanks for joining us. Thank you, yes. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about Franny Peabody. Yeah, Franny Peabody Center is Maine's largest and oldest community-based HIV and AIDS services organization, which is a really long way to describe it, but what our mission is is to prevent the spread of HIV and to assist people living with HIV and AIDS in the state of Maine and we provide services for them. Um, How long has the center been opened? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I guess you'd have to start from the base, like the beginning of okay. it, because um, it has a kind of a rich history, and that's why I feel honored to work there. Um, Franny Peabody Center was named after Frances Peabody, who is this amazing, inspirational lady. Um, in 1984, her grandson died of AIDS, and this was a huge shock to her during that time. That was when the epidemic like hit so strong. And when her grandson died, it catapulted this 80 year old lady at the age of 80. She became an mm. activist into um, working in the field of HIV and AIDS. Um, she first started off joining a support group. She was the only single, single gray haired, little dress wearing elderly woman in an entire room full of gay men. Mm -hmm. which is pretty awesome in there itself. Um, and from that, she got involved. She re led weekly support groups for mothers and families, um, people living with HIV and people dying of AIDS at that time. Um, in 1995, um, uh, in 19, yeah, well, she was actually one of the co-founders of the AIDS Project. And in 1995 is when the Peabody House started, and that was a hospice, more or less, for people dying of AIDS at that time. Is and that place still here today? No, it actually closed down. Um, in 2001, Franny Peabody passed away. And then in 2002, in honor of her legacy, the Franny Peabody Center and the AIDS Project merged. And the, the Peabody House actually closed down shortly before that because the advancements in medications and treatment of people living with HIV and AIDS hmm. has progressed so much that the need for a hospice wasn't needed but a need for services for people living with mm. HIV and AIDS were. Wow. So, yeah. like, to all of our viewers out there, I, I run into so many people that are so stigmatized by HIV and AIDS, um, and I think that's where a lot of fear towards homosexuals comes from. If, if you were to say anything to those people out there, I mean, what would you say about HIV today? HIV today is a disease that you can manage throughout your life. It's not a death sentence anymore. We are educated, we are aware, we're a supportive community. And if it's something that scares you, I encourage people to educate themselves upon it because it's not a scary topic. It's something that people should be talking about that so many people hide and don't actually disclose to others because they live in that shame and that, that fear of that stigma. But it should be looked at anything else. Like if a friend has cancer, do you hide that from a friend? No, if you find out you have cancer, you're gonna to talk to them about that and they're gonna support you through that. Right. And in my mind, it's 2014. I mean, it's like, you know, years and years after the epidemic has hit us. Um, we've already gone through the hard times, the sad times, the times of misinformation. And in my mind, it's just kinda, of just educate ourselves and support the community and, you know, support our brothers and sisters that are living with HIV. If, if I were to be at risk for HIV because I was inappropriate at a certain time or whatever, what's the best course of treatment for me? Yeah, definitely. Um, in general, what we say is everybody should be, in my opinion, it changes. I think everybody should take your, an idea of an HIV test like you would for your physical. Definitely make sure you get one a year. You mm -hmm. know, and it depends on the level of sexual, uh, sexual activity, get two a year. If you find yourself being more sexually active, get three. Like, you know, balance it out in regards to what type of sex and the amount of sex that you're having in general. 
Um, but if one ten, were oh, to be, oh, oh yeah, sorry. but with one word to be exposed, you know, if you had a known exposure to HIV, is that what we're getting at with or that? Just, or just um, whether you were worried about it afterwards because you didn't think about it at the time or you don't know the status of the other person, you never asked or whatever it is. Yeah. What do you do with that anxiety? Where, you know, where's the best place to go? It sounds like it is to go get treated. Yeah, I mean, that's like a great thing is what we provided at our office um, at our, it's One Spring Street, which is perfectly located next to Sticks Nightclub in Portland. Um, but it's a place that we want to create when we, that we have that it's not sterile. You go and we're listening to music. We have fun posters. We have plants everywhere. It's beautiful. It's great. We have very educated community members um, you know, that are also working there and volunteering. So when somebody comes in with these questions, these concerns, um, possible exposure to HIV, and they don't know how to navigate that, instead of sweating bullets and trying to make a phone call to get in to see your primary care, which, yeah, it may take three days and it's going to be awesome, and I'm not saying don't do that. But in that three days, that's a lot of anxiety to go through. Right. So take advantage of a community resource. Come down and sit in a room with somebody that's it's completely confidential. It's completely anonymous. You don't even have to tell your name and say, this is what I'm going through, this is what I experienced, can you help me from point A to point B? Because it totally depends on the situation for people, and HIV is kind of a tricky thing. It's, it's different for everybody. Um, a different exposure can lead to a different answer. Right. So never Google or WebMD yourself on it, because it'll give you a heart attack. It's right, good right. to take advantage of the community resources that Portland has. Yeah. And, and what if I'm at risk for other um, sexually transmitted diseases, or, or I think I might be, what, where would I go with that? Yeah, definitely. Um, like I said, the same thing is your primary care um, is a great place to go from there. And then over at Portland Public Health on Indian Street is a great place. Um, they do their walk-in clinics for STDs testing, and they also do HIV. Um, the, the benefit of, I want to say the benefit, because I love India Street and I go there actually personally myself. Um, I do is, too. <laughs> right? Like, why not? It's take advantage of an amazing resource we have. Right. Um, they do the full gamut of STDs, and that should be something that's taken very seriously. Right. I feel like, um, you know, we were having this discussion earlier about, you know, I don't think that people put much attention to STDs as also as strong of an emphasis as they do on HIV. Right. I mean, you have STDs, but many guys don't show signs or symptoms of STDs. Right. You know, we can carry that and pass it along to another. Right. And to have an STD can increase your chance of contracting HIV due to your immune system dropping. So it kind of goes hand in hand. Right. Um, so India Street's a great one on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 3 to 5.45 p.m. They do an STD clinic there. Um, and then just pop in, see us, get an HIV test, get your 20-minute result, bam, right there. Or go to your physician. Or your go to your physician. primary care physician, for sure. And thanks again, Matt, for coming. Yeah, really. Thanks. Experience. That was really great. I yeah, appreciate it. Thank you, guys.